Officer on deck. As you were, pilots. I'm Commander Kinetic Impulsor from Guard Frequency Response, here with the essential tips to get you around the deep black and back home again. Today I'm briefing you on basic anti-Xeno combat in Elite Dangerous. We noticed some of you rooks having some issues with this, so we scheduled this training. Knowing when you're ready to take on the Thargoids can be the difference between your future as a part-time seat cushion deformer and a background temperature sensor anomaly. Let me just start by saying that I'm giving this briefing under protest and against my better judgment and after having my arm twisted. Because if you're a nugget, you've got no business tangling with some plant-slash-bug hybrid that wants to cover you in goo that has a pH so high it needs to be written as an exponent. Yeah, I know that pH is technically already an exponent, but that was the joke. You know what? Just, 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 just shut it. Just shut it. As I was saying... Anti-Xeno combat is not for the faint of heart or the slim of wallet. However, it's come to my attention that the fate of humanity is at stake and that killing Thargoids is some of the most lucrative work out there. So I suppose that the prospect of fatter wallets and the survival of the species might uh, bolster some rookie hearts. However, as much as my gruff demeanor and cavalier attitude suggests otherwise, I would rather not have all of you end up as pockmarks on space rocks. So. There are going to be a few prerequisites if you want to stay in this particular force. First, if you don't have 400 million guinea quids in your space buck account, there's the door. I I'm serious. Go. You can't afford this fight. Second, are you ranked as a scout or better with the Pilots Federation Exploration Division? No. Get out. Door. Now. You're not experienced enough for this fight. Third. Have you sold cargo to five or more black markets? Yeah, I mean it. You can tell I'm serious about this because I didn't try to make up a coy euphemism for black market. How can you tell how many black markets? Uh, uh, fine, fine, hang on, hang on. Go to your right-hand panel, home tab, choose codex, choose commander, choose stats, and click on smuggling. If the number of markets is five or bigger, you can stay. If not, there's the door. Don't let it hit you where the dark wheel split you. Next, do you have a crate mark II or can you get one? No, you don't have to have a special system permit or a faction reputation score to get one. Just cold hard cash. And yes, you can buy it with part of your 400 million. Finally, do you have a smattering of raw data and manufactured engineering materials? Specifically, do you have iron, sulfur, and chromium? Do you have modified consumer firmware, specialized legacy firmware, and security firmware patches? Do you have flawed focus crystals, focus crystals, mechanical equipment, mechanical components, conductive components, hybrid capacitors, grid resistors, and precipitated alloys? Can you get them? Do you know what they are? No? Get off my deck. Go see the galaxy a bit before the Thargoids melt it all. Okay, everybody set? Nobody still here who's unqualified? I mean, you're all unqualified, but like really unqualified. No? All right, here goes. First things first. Go buy that crate Mark II. Not the Phantom. Mark II. Upgrade your skin to the military grade alloy armor and A rate all the other core components. But Commander, I can save weight by D rating, blah, 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 blah. blah. Nah. A rate it all and stop arguing with me. For the optionals, pick a standard size 6 shield, a size 6 cargo bay, two 5D hull reinforcements, a 4D and a 3D module reinforcement, a 3C Xeno multi-limpet controller, and another 2D hull enforcement. I don't care what you do with the size 1 slot. Get a large beam laser turret for the centerline hardpoint and leave the rest empty for now. Then grab A-class shield boosters for two of your utility slots and leave the other two slots for later. You can get the ship, the armor, the cargo hold, most of the hull and module reinforcements, the shield bank and boosters, and the beam laser from Denver Station in the ANSI system. For the rest of the stuff, you can use the NR.CZ data site to locate the other components. If you don't know what that is, go listen to the Nuggets briefing on third-party data sites. I'll wait here. Got all that? Good. Okay. If you're starting from scratch, you'll have just blown through about half of your original 400 million. I told you this was expensive. 
and you're not quite done yet. Next, go find your invitation to an engineer named The Dweller. Go to his base in the Word system. As long as you've done business with five black markets, he should graciously allow you to pay him a half million credits for access to his shop. Pay the man and don't ask him about his name. Once you're there, upgrade your laser turret to a grade three long range with the thermal vent experimental effect. Also, you can optionally upgrade your power distributor to the charged enhanced feature and super conduit experimental trait. You'll need more engineering materials to trade though, like chemical processors and chemical distilleries. Inara will explain everything. Once you've got that sorted, check your computer for an invitation from Felicity Farseer. But before you set a course for the DC at system, it is vital that you set your IFF transponder to private or solo. Do not, under any circumstances, jump into DC yet with your transponder in open mode. I repeat, do not go to DC yet in open. Are you all reading me five by five? I need an acknowledgement from each of you. Good. All right, once you're there, you're gonna use the Inara site to locate a fleet carrier that is selling meta alloys. You know, once upon a time when the angry poinsettias were a little less angry, you could wander the deep black and pick up your own. Now it's easier and far less dangerous to spend north of a million guinea quids to just buy one. Land at a carrier, transact your business, and take off for Farseer's base. Give the kindly old lady her Thargoid kibble and settle in for some upgrading work. You'll want to upgrade your shield boosters to grade one heavy duty and optionally add the super capacitors experimental effect. But again, you'll need more stuff to trade like cadmium and untypical shield scans, which really should be called atypical because I don't think untypical is a word. Upgrade your power plant to grade one overcharged. Optionally, you can upgrade your frame shift drive if you have chemical processors and atypical disrupted wake echoes. See, see, atypical, there. But the main reason to visit is to crank up your thrusters to grade three dirty with the drag drive experimental effect. This is really important. If you've ever been around a Thargoid, you know that speed is life. Get fast, get as fast as you can. Okay, so now, You've got a pretty nice little combat ship. Now it's time to make it an anti-Xeno combat ship. Your last stop is one of the AX rescue ships. Go to your galaxy map, pick out a blue and green cross, and head out. Once you've landed, fill those last two utility slots with a shutdown neutralizer and a Xeno scanner. Buy and equip a pair of size 3 enhanced multi-cannon turrets and a pair of size 2 enhanced AX missile launchers. And that's it. You're equipped. Configure your power priorities, set your fire groups, and don't forget your limpets. But let me give you a final word or two of advice. First, you're still a rook. You will lose this ship, probably a few times, before you get the hang of things. Hopefully you still have enough guinea quids for about a dozen rebuys. Never fly without a rebuy, and that goes ten times over when tangling with the azaleas of doom. Secondly, this ship and your chops are fit to play a support role only. You are a scout killer. Your laser is marginally effective against them, and your multi-cannons are very effective. Focus there. However, your AX missiles are good for pressure damage on the lowest level interceptors. So if you're feeling frisky, fire your thermal vent beam laser at one of those necro daisies at about 4,800 meters. Keep it on target, then gently close range to about uh, 12 or 1,500 meters. And just as your heat drops to 1% and you fade from the Death Petunia's gaze, unload your magazines. Just be prepared to run when it roars. Third, stick to planetary base defenses if you can. There won't be any Thargon swarms. You can land to repair and rearm, and there will be help for you in the form of non-commander AX pilots. Last, watch out for that caustic damage. In this ship, your best bet is to disengage from the furball Clear your targeting computer by selecting target ahead with your nose pointed into empty space and pickling off a decontamination limpet. You did remember your limpets, didn't you? It'll take a few seconds and the Thargoid scouts like to shoot them off your hull for target practice, so make sure the procedure completes. Well, uh, that's it. Well, <laughs> yeah, actually, it's nowhere near it. And there's so much more you need to know before you go throw your lives, fortunes, and sacred nuggetness away. But uh, I know your love of humanity and your desires for fame and fortune have almost certainly overwhelmed your common sense. So get out there, sluggers. Good hunting, good luck, and the Thargoids will most likely kill you in the morning.
Okay, boys and girls, put your finger paints back in your cubbies and change to your flight suits. Skids up in 10. See you in the deep black.